So we were motoring along towards Spanish waters and I came down below and I looked at the floor and the actual floor was floating in water. And I thought, my first thought was, we are taking in water and we're gonna sink. You and me, we're family. The bond that we share is as deep as the sea. No matter how rough things may come to be, you and me, we're family. So we just spent a week in Curacao Marine doing the hull and doing the bow thruster and various other jobs. Uh, then we were put back in the water and then we headed off for Spanish waters. And about half an hour out of Spanish waters, uh, I heard a scream from down below and it was a renker and uh, basically the bilge boards were floating above the floor level. So I just shouted to Woody, I said, Woody, water. Um, and we were taken on water and quite a lot of water as well. And then we just started bailing and I wasn't sure whether we we're going to ba bail quick enough or we'd sink first and what went through my head was do we do a May Day now and we're going to lose the boat. And the fact that we don't have full insurance was like, I thought that is it, you know. The first thing to check is the last thing you did. Um, the first thought was actually it might be the bow thruster because that has leaked in the past and we've had water in there. I uh, ran down and I checked the bow thruster. And next thing I checked the seacocks, they were all fine. And then we started bailing and pumping. And then Woody tasted it. And it was in fact um, fresh water, which completely confused me because the water tank is below the level of the bilge. It wasn't salt water, it wasn't the bow thruster. Next thing that sprang to mind was we have a catastrophic uh, hole in the keel which was forcing the fresh water up and salt water was entering down the keel so I undid the hatch, had a look there, that was fine. Could not work out what was going on and all the time water was coming in and we were filling up. So the next thing I could think of was there was a uh, a burst pipe somewhere so I switched the water pump off um, which had been going for I'm not sure how long it had been going for because the little warning light has gone out and you can't hear it above the noise of the engine uh, so to cut a long story short uh, there was uh, a lot of running about and mayhem as we tried to clear the water okay the good news is that we're not sinking it's fresh water the bad news is that's all our fresh water from the water tanks like in the boat we're on the boat we can't go back we can't just stop so we have to just carry on uh, so Rowan's up on deck um, just yeah like because my dad has a pump he's pumping the water onto the deck and Rowan's making sure that yeah, she's just looking at it and then my mum's getting buckets of water and just scooping it up um, and pouring it on the cockpit as you can hear uh, and Darry is just uh, steering the boat uh, and it's, uh, it's dramatic. Okay, so we're going into Spanish waters and having just um, felt, felt like the boat was sinking, 
we've you know haven't sung but we've, lost, we've lost all our fresh water we haven't sung we've lost all our fresh water but now this is really shallow we haven't had time as, as usual to check the uh, navigation here but it looks nice Wait, yeah. we just arrived at the bay we've got the music well, we're back to all the party boats and stuff now. We're in the tourist area, so it'll be just like every night. But um, yeah, I was actually quite surprised. I thought because we, after the place we were, I thought it would literally just be like big silums and like pipes and stuff. There's a nice bright beach, nice water, looks like good snorkeling, music. I'm not gonna complain about what I have. I'm just gonna enjoy it. And it, it's really nice. We arrived in Spanish waters. It's quite tricky navigating in because there's a lot of shallow bits sort of in between the channel. You know the way we go through the list of everything that could possibly go wrong on a boat? So, the, okay, first I thought we're sinking and that's brilliant that we weren't sinking, but um, we did actually lose a thousand litres of water on that trip. We leaked all the water. Um, yeah, we can get water probably somewhere around here, but it will be expensive. But the problem is, what is the problem? And that is going to be the annoying thing of trying to work out what the problem is. So we've got a burst pipe which basically one real passage a pipe were burst or the fresh water pipes and because the engine was running we didn't hear the fresh water pump going and so we basically pumped 800 litres of fresh water out of our water tank into the bilge. Yeah so we're gonna have no water from our tanks right now. Um, I suppose on the bright side again we've got four canisters 25 litres each and we've got about 30 litres in those and we've got a couple of bottles of emergency water and we're not at sea you know if we were at sea that would have been disastrous basically if we'd been in the mid-atlantic and we'd lost that much water we would have had to have called for help to get more water because yeah you should always have enough emergency water enough emergency water to last you for the whole trip um, to drink at the very least so we've managed to pump it all out and kind of traced the leak which is a really inaccessible part of the of the boat it's in one of the water pipes which runs under the toilet and to the sink and it splits off under there to the sink and the shower so we're not exactly sure where it is but it's kind of we know the general location is somewhere under the toilet which couldn't be less accessible really so the only thing to think of doing is drilling an access hatch in the shower tray or in, in the underneath the toilet or around the toilet and hopefully we'll get lucky and we'll find a leak in one of those um, access hatches just, well, we you know we've got out the boatyard this morning with our jobs list ticked off feeling really good and then suddenly a whole new job list sort of comes up it's really demoralizing to be honest so many people not even knowing a volcano for the whole life we're basically doing what a family could dream of so so you say you should put this into perspective yeah like yeah. and then in the great scheme of things it's just a small problem is it? yeah it's just like we're doing we're doing a dream we're it's not really like something you would think of it's a dream it's like yep yeah, okay well we still got enough drink and work for the next few days haven't we Let's sleep on it. In, you know, in the greater scheme of things, people have no water and we've got a little bit left. We've still got 200 litres and four 25 litre canisters. Um, just means Rowan can't have a long hour and hours. Here we are again, behind the toilet. There's a removable floor at the bottom of this shelf. So I'm gonna see if I can get to that. I suspect the pipes come in just at that end bit. I've checked on the other side and they're actually fiberglassed in place. Um, which is not a good sign really. Um, so before I start cutting holes in places, um, I'm going to try and get into as many hatches as I can. The most ridiculous thing about the design of this boat, uh, people do bang on about animals and how greatly designed they are and how brilliant they are. But honestly, the, the more I, I delve into these jobs, the kind of the, the least respect I've got for animals. <laughs> because in no part of the water system is there a valve. And so when something like this happens, you can't even shut, you can't even isolate the bathroom, let alone the taps. So when you get a leak like this, the only thing you can do is shut off the water pump and that's it, your whole water system is then, is then disabled until you can fix that leak. You've got these two rubber pipes coming off a, like a T-junction for, uh, for the shower and the taps. 
Um, I'm still not quite sure which is the hot or cold, but uh, anyway. I've got the thing out. So I needed to get 120 mil of pipe. Uh, so I've looked all around the boat for a similar piece of pipe and the only place I can find somewhere where it's spare or I've got plenty of slack is on the pipe leading to the accumulator. So I've got easy 120 mil on there which I can take off, which I'm going to do now. It's really difficult to get to. I'm just worried if I drop the screwdriver it's going to go right into an inaccessible part of the bilge. Uh, just as these jobs always do, it escalates. I've dropped the screwdriver down the bilge and I can't actually reach it with my hand so I'm going to have to go fishing for it with the, this um, sea searcher. So that's it, another job done. It's just unfortunate we lost uh, 850 litres of water because of a, a tiny split in that bit of pipe. Uh, within about an hour, we had 850 litres of water pumped from our main water tank into the bilges. So that was all of that money and time and effort wasted and a day of uh, trying to fix things again when it should have been a day on anchor resting after our busy week in the boatyard. I've got to say one good thing about these Amels is that none of that water got into the rest of the boat. And these boats are designed that if you get a hole in one part of the boat, you can just lock it off. And actually the boat probably wouldn't sink. I don't know. I don't know whether you f if you filled the whole of the bow of the boat with water or whether the boat would sink, but the water definitely didn't get into the main part of the boat. So, you know, that's one good thing. I suppose. I'm trying to find the good things. Um, I think what had happened was the engine going had basically heated up the hot water system uh, which hadn't been used in over three months and it, it split a pipe. So um, yeah, if you've got enamel, I would inspect this. So right now it's raining like a lot and because we have no water, we're trying to fill up all the buckets so we get water. Okay, so our recent water emergencies mean we've had to deploy this uh, new system earlier than we wanted to, but it's actually worked really well. It's, uh, it's actually for collecting leaks in, uh, in warehouses from air conditioning units and water ducts. Um, and it's to channel the leak into a, in a bucket. But what we've done is we've deployed it on the boat and now we have this running rainwater running directly into our tanks. So after all that, we managed to go back to that really nice beach at the entrance. We're on the entrance to Spanish waters in a place called Santa Barbara. And a bit like Martinique, um, there's a resort here that's been abandoned because of the, uh, the COVID crisis. Uh, not entirely abandoned, it's just kind of uh, been shut down uh, during this time. And I think it's in receivership or it's exchanging hands with somebody else, I don't know. But anyway, the upshot of it is, is the beach is uh, completely open to the public. Um, and there's a nice pontoon there to land the dinghy, there's a shower over there and the kids are playing in the sand, it's got a nice cordoned off area and there's even, uh, there's even um, sunbeds as well so it's basically we're having a, a very expensive holiday resort experience for free.
actually there's a bit of water here so I even came and um, washed our smalls <laughs> because um, I don't know when we're gonna have enough water to do the um, use the washing machine next <laughs> So stay tuned for the next episode when we head off to one of the most beautiful islands in the world called Klein Curacao. A big thanks for watching and especially thanks to our patrons who make these videos possible. If you'd like to become part of the patron family, then follow the link in the description below or just put Mothership Adrift Patreon and I'll take you to the right place. You and me, we're family. The bond that we share is as deep. We would really love to hear from you, so if you'd like to leave comments, then go to our Facebook page or Instagram or even to our Patreon page where you can connect to us immediately. And don't forget to check out our new t-shirt designs available on our merchandise store. Hey, you always